We are Casey and Savannah, and we've been best friends for 10 years. Give me a look at that. They're like a printed, you can see the mountains actually. Over the years, we have been on many adventures, including plenty of travel, hiking the John Muir Trail, starting multiple businesses, building out a camper van, and creating a little homestead in the city. You even may have seen one of our mini DIY stock tank pool videos. We recently bought five acres of raw land in the Upper Cumberland area of Tennessee and are embarking on our biggest adventure yet. Follow along as we build our off-grid homestead from the ground up. Florida at the beach this week which is why I have this like crazy sunglasses tan we are leaving tomorrow so when you see this video we will actually already be back at the land but today we are going to be making salt so this is something that we've done on another vacation and we actually really loved the results and you may be thinking what does your vacation and salt have to do with homesteading it has a lot to do with homesteading because homesteading to us is a lot of things but one of those things is learning and trying new things in regards to preserving and harvesting your own food whether it is growing meat chickens to harvest for meat or growing our garden or um going to the ocean and making salt. That's all stuff that's really interesting to us. Salt is one of those things that you probably don't think about making on your own. And I will say the way that we are doing it is not necessarily sustainable, but it is something that is interesting um, if you are, if you wanna just try it out on your next vacation, um, anywhere, any ocean that you go to. You may have been never, even in a journey of trying to produce more of your food, thought, oh, what about salt? It's one of those things that you use a lot of, not like so much that you would need to make gallons and gallons for the whole year, but you use it on everything. It's like sugar. It's kind of just this thing that you may not even know where it comes from. Salt actually can come from a lot of different places and there's a lot of different kinds of salt, but today we are talking about sea salt. So in order to make sea salt, you will need sea water. Bottle. On collecting your seawater first of all you can use any container you want um, if you are vacationing at the beach you'll probably want something with a lid something that can screw on so you can carry it if you wanted to get crazy or like really go pull out you could get a five gallon bucket with a lid um, the only problem is that that will be really heavy so if you could keep it under a gallon at a time maybe a gallon every time you go to the beach or whatever um, that is easier to carry. This time we didn't actually do a ton of seawater. We didn't make a ton of salt, but just enough to where we can sprinkle it on food here and there. This time we used like an old coffee mate canister and a half gallon milk jug and like an orange juice container, just like anything will work. Once you collect your seawater, it's pretty simple. I've seen people do it a few different ways. I've seen where people will put it like on a baking sheet, like a really shallow or like a casserole dish and put it in the oven and bake it basically until all the water evaporates. And then they stick, they'll have like this thin sheet of salt and they'll break it up and stick it in a blender. And then it's like this really fine powder, which how do you even use that? That's not a very usable way to have salt. If that's what you want, that's how you can do that. But the way that I've done it is the way that I like the best. 
and you put it in a big old stock pot and then basically you're just gonna let it boil until all the water's gone. takes a while like probably like a couple hours the stock pot that we were using we only had like three-fourths of the um the water pool like three-fourths of the way up and that took about two hours for it to get really the water to get really low and so when it gets really low it'll be really bubbly at that point when it's really low you're gonna stir the water until it completely dissolves because if you don't it'll start sticking to the bottom and then you will have a problem and you'll start having like really hard chunks and then you'll have to do some kind of breaking it up which you don't want to do because once it dries up it's really hard to manipulate it by hand so once it gets all boiled down we're just stir and stir and stir and you'll start to see salt like it will just be like this white powdery stuff at the bottom of the water and you just keep stirring until it becomes more and more like salt and it will be really like mushy but you still have to keep stirring to really dry it out because you don't want any water in there for storing it when you're stirring it until it dissolves it becomes more like a flaky sea salt and when you look at it it honestly it doesn't look like flakes per se it's it's a bigger piece of salt where it's more like you might want to top your food with it and not like pour it into something to make um like as an ingredient mixed into something. I mean, you can do that, but it's more, for me, for us, it's more like a finishing salt, but you can use it however you want to. But this method kind of makes it that kind of like chunky, um, I don't know, just like PC. Our favorite way to store it is just in a glass jar with a lid. If you're like a long time homesteader, something like making butter might be something that you do all the time. But for me, my grandpa, when we would have family gatherings, he would bring like a jar of heavy cream and he would be like, we're gonna make butter. And we would just shake the, you know, shake the jar and then just pass it around and everybody took turns shaking it and then by the time the food was ready we had butter and so to, it's like making butter was kind of like a just a fun thing so this could just be a fun thing for you um just to you know see what it's like to make salt and then also to use that salt on some of your food or it could be something that you do every time you go on vacation or maybe you live by an ocean which that would be really cool because you could probably actually harvest all the salt that you need for an entire year we live really far from the ocean so we're not going to be uh doing that anytime soon so this is obviously a really short video because it doesn't take that long to explain how to make salt i hope this was interesting to you if it was definitely give this video a thumbs up and let us know if you've ever made salt before or if you're interested in actually trying this the next time you are near the ocean also you could just take the water home with you and make salt at home we did it because we don't have the any kitchen set up at the land we just used the kitchen while we were here to make it and we're actually in the process of making a second batch so we can have a little more salt to take home with us but a little thing of salt is easier to carry than like two gallons of water so if you're new here we post a video every sunday and we post about homesteading and living off grid and producing food and gardening and lots of different things definitely subscribe if that's something you're interested in and come back next sunday to see what we're up to thanks so much for watching guys bye